Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. <laughs> Sam I. B. DeGangi reporting for the Media Speaks. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are willing to laugh at my unshaved ass for not timing this. Let me tell you two things. First of all, you work a full-time job and try to be able to sh shave. Second of all, you try to sync up a YouTube camera to an HD, HD camera before you laugh at me. Guys, CNBC.com. Magnitude is 6.9 earthquake strikes northern Japan. We, we started all funny, didn't we? We started all with let's laugh at the fat guy in the hat. You know what? I wish we could keep laughing. We can't. Because this, my friends, is very, very bad. All jokes aside, why would I go on camera after I worked my whole shift and I'm doing this for virtually no money at all? Because it matters, people. It doesn't matter whether you like me. It doesn't matter whether or not I meet you in real life and think you're an idiot. It doesn't matter. Is what I'm saying true? That's why I'm doing this, and that's why this matters, because ever since I was a little kid, um, how many of you remember the movie Silkwood? If you do, put it in my comment line and say, I'm the first. Let me know what your favorite charity is, and I'll promote it online for a week. Um, how many of you remember Silkwood? How many of you remember Ozzy Osbourne's The Ultimate Sin? I'll accept that as an answer, too. At a very young age, I took an interest in rather strange things, not, not like most teenagers do, but all things nuclear, among a few other nerd interests, um, attracted me greatly as a very young child. And I learned what nuclear was. I learned what nuclear anything, nuclear bomb testing, nuclear power plants, nuclear radiation of any kind, I know a lot about it for somebody who isn't a physicist, and I'm not. I probably know more about it than anybody else that isn't, okay? And we've predicted for years that Everything that we are seeing in relation to nuclear power plant issues was going to happen. And again, I'm talking about like the 80s here. It's not, it's not like we, we were brain surgeons or we had some crystal ball in front of us. Three Mile Island had already happened. Okay, everybody knows that Ozzy Osbourne is like sometimes talks kind of odd, and you can't really make a whole lot of what he says. You know what he did? He wrote The Ultimate Sin in 1986. What else happened in 1986? The nuclear disaster that we know is Chernobyl. That means that it must have been even even somebody of known intelligence, like Ozzy Osbourne. New in 1984, 85, before it happened, which must have been when he was writing the record if it came out in 86. He, even somebody of known intel, are you smarter than Ozzy Osbourne? Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. I bet you think you are. Okay, you probably are. I, I love the man, I really do, but let's face it, he's not the brightest crayon in the box, and he'd be the first one to say that. He, he knew before Chernobyl happened what Chernobyl was going to do. Released as Chernobyl happened, you could be an average idiot teenager like I was and see this coming. You didn't have to be incredibly intelligent. Now, if you were incredibly intelligent, then you were like, okay, well, scientists have predicted that there was going to be a massive earthquake between the years 2009 and 2020 that was going to devastate the coast of Japan. So maybe, just maybe, Sparky, we shouldn't build a nuclear power plant on the coast of Japan because some of the smarter people, you know, smarter than me as a teenager, smarter than Ozzy Osbourne, anybody want to argue that? Probably not. Doctors were telling you 
that this was going to happen. Physicists, geologists were telling you that this was going to happen. And now it's happened and you're shocked by it. And we've been warning you forever. And I don't mean we. I am an idiot compared to the people that I'm talking about. Arnie Gonderson, Helen Caldicott, Lauren Moray. I'm barely worthy to even mention their names by comparison of intelligence levels. But all of us have been warning you forever. A magnitude 6.9 earthquake struck northern Japan early Tuesday with reports emerging that a small tsunami struck the coast without causing much damage. That's wonderful news. It was posted as I'm reporting this six hours ago. That's wonderful news. The problem is that they need this plant to stand for between 30 to 40 years before they can decommission it enough that it doesn't harm you and your family. And this applies to everybody listening to me in the Northern Hemisphere. Now, how many of you in the Northern Hemisphere believe that a massive earthquake is not going to knock these already tattered buildings down in the next 30 to 40 years? Local fishermen, fishermen excuse me, in several ports in the area said an around 10 centimeter tsunami struck Wate Prefecture according to Japanese broadcaster NHK. The Japanese Meteorological Agency had advised evacuating the coastal areas there. No mention of the fact that there is a quadruple melted down, melted out, melted through reactor sitting on the coast. Uh, these soon, they gotta love CNNBC for what they don't report. The tsunami warning in the area has been canceled now. Although this is again, it was posted six hours ago. Though there may be a slight sea level change in coastal regions, no tsunami damage is expected, the GMA said on its website. So, of course, nothing in the next 30 to 40 years could ever manage it, and if they do manage uh, to overtake the plant, it's coastal. We just won't talk about the nuclear power plant. It says Awate Prefecture is largely royal. Well, that's not going to help them. With a total population of around 1.3 million. While the area has a nuclear power plant, it was not damaged, according to the report from NHK. While I'm sure there won't be any other earthquakes at all that could ever damage the great idea that is nuclear power. Um, tongue in cheek. This is InfoWars. 81% of dollar store products that were tested contain chemicals linked to learning disabilities, cancer, and serial, serious illness. One of the reasons for this is that they buy a lot of their things from China. And China allows a lead content that will turn you into an idiot. So, I mean, for those of you that don't know, lead does cause cancer and lead to stupidity, which is probably why you didn't know it. This is from Prevent Disease. I'm kidding. I'm not being arrogant. I'm just saying, how many of you are so tired of, of just trying to warn people of something and they just stand there doe-eyed and they don't hear a word you say unless that word is Kardashian. It feels like everywhere I look, that's where those people are. Healthy Stuff, in collaboration with the Campaign for Healthier Solutions, released a report today about toxic chemicals found in dollar store products. The report, a day late and a dollar short discount retailers are fail, falling behind on safer chemicals, it includes testing results for 164 dollar store products such as toys, jewelry, school supplies, and other household items that found over 81%, that would be 133 out of 164, contained at least one hazardous chemical above levels of concern. Why am I reporting on this? If you're asking that, it's probably because you have a ton of money and don't live near a dollar store. I don't have a ton of money, and I do live very close to a dollar store. Um, I'm in the band Passing Time. Uh, those on HD may not know that. Those on low def can see the um, lower third. I'm in a band. 
And I like to buy people clocks because Sam from Passing Time, the band, bought you a clock, the time, you get it. A lot of those clocks over the years have come from dollar stores, and now I've wondered, maybe I've poisoned everyone I've ever really cared about. And the campaign also sent a letter to the CEOs of the four largest dollar store chains, including Family Dollar, tentatively acquired by Dollar Tree. That means Dollar Tree is Family Dollar as of January 22nd. Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and 99 cents only, urging them to stop the sale of products with hazardous chemicals to communities of color and low-income families who already live in the more polluted areas and food deserts, yes, that is very true, and adapt policies that will protect both customers and their businesses. Combined, these, pro these discount chains have sales totaling $36 billion and operate more stores nationally than Walmart. People struggling to make ends meet, it says, are confined to shopping at dollar stores, which I can attest to you is true, said Jose T. Bravo, a national coordinator for the Campaign of Healthier Solutions. Quote, we are already disappropriately affected by pollution and lack of adequate medical care, and now we know we're filling our homes and our bodies with chemicals released from dollar store products, and this needs to stop. So what are these chemicals? Uh, flightlets, which are linked to birth defects, reduced fertility, cancer, learning disabilities, which might be why everybody seems so stupid, diabetes, and other health disabilities. Um, PVC, or vinyl, which creates hazards throughout its life cycle, and has been linked to asthma and lung effects, and toxic metals such as lead, we already went over that, which harms brain development, leading to learning disabilities, a lower IQ, and cause other serious health impacts, especially in children. Look around you, friends. That's everyone that you know. <laughs> I swear, isn't it? Of 49% of products tested, that is 80 of 164, for those of you that suck at math as I do, contain two or more hazardous chemicals above levels of concern, 38% of the products tested, 63 of 164, contained PVC. And lastly, 32% of a subset of vinyl products tested for flightlets, 12 of 38, that's high, contained levels of flightlets above the CPSC limit for children. In other words, we are killing ourselves with cheap things from the dollar store. How could you prevent this? Friends, I'm a libertarian, I really am, but since they are usually not labeled on the package, one of the ways to fix this is to not allow anything into the country which has levels elevated beyond what we already allow in the country. Why are such simple things so hard to understand? Again, libertarianism being tied to making a choice, but you can't make a choice if you don't know what's in it. This is from InfoWars, Kit Daniels. PETA kills 88% of the pets in its care. For those of you that don't know, PETA stands for People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. And what's funny about that is they go around, if you're wearing like a mink coat, they'll throw house paint on your coat because you're harming the animal and they farming it. However, they kill 88% of the animals <laughs> that are given to their wonderful care. Um, it says 88% of the dogs and cats entrusted in its care, that would be PETA last year, in contrast to no-kill animal shelters, which have adoption rates of over 90%. In other words, your local no-kill animal shelter, which you can look up with any internet search, saves 90% of the animals that go to it. Yet, 88% die if you go to PETA. How clear can we be here? What kind of hypocrites are these? These are the same people that think you need to be sitting around eating tofu and developing man tits. 
Peter took, look it up, it's true. Peter took in 2,626 pets in 2014, but only found homes for 39. 39 out of 2,626. With the rest either being killed within 24 hours, like a day, or sent to kill shelters. How humane. It's like the Adolf Hitler of, P of animal rights. Most of these animals were perfectly healthy, and according to reports by the Virginia Department of Agriculture, inspectors of PETA's Norfolk headquarters frequently found, quote, no animals to be housed in the facility. In other words, they weren't even, didn't even have any animals in there. They weren't feeding anything. They just killed them all before they got there. They found that 90% were euthanized within the first 24 hours of custody, Sputnik reported. The official 88% kill rate of 2014 is up from 82.4% in 2013. In other words, what they're doing is they're taking your money. It's going to the upper echelon of PETA. And they're making a lot of money by the fact that they are killing every animal that gets in its possession 88% of the time within 24 hours of the time that they were given said animals. In other words, if you want to give an animal no chance of life at all, trust and or donate to PETA. Uh, this is the Washington Post. This was good news. Stoned drivers are a lot safer than drunk ones. New federal data show. Well, that doesn't surprise me since most of the people that get DUIs were absolutely no danger to anybody whatsoever. It's a money racket. Uh, for anybody that already knows them, it's probably not much of a surprise. But it is interesting. I'll look up Christopher Ingram's article here. Literally, compared to the legal substance, which is alcohol, people that have smoked weed are of no danger at all to their fellow drivers on the street. It doesn't surprise me any, because people that smoke weed have a certain tolerance to it, whereas people that don't will get high and think, oh my God, I couldn't possibly be on the road with someone that feels like this. But of course, if, if you smoke weed a lot, then you have an immunity. And it, I mean, everyone has known this for years, but now that it's appeared in the Washington Compost, I guess that means everybody will finally take it seriously. Friends, uh, this is from DailyMail.uk. Obamacare program costs $50,000 in taxpayer money for every American who gets health insurance, says Bombshell Budget Report. Now, let me ask you something. How many of you had insurance? And do not go to the article at Daily Mail because they have pop-ups and it's going to take over your computer and they're a really piss-poor uh, website. They really do suck, but they have a good report here, which is sourced, so I mean, I'll use it because they posted it, but usually, imagine having $50,000 for health insurance. How many of you, as I was asking before I was interrupted by their stupid site, how many of you had wonderful coverage before Obamacare? And of course now, you either have no coverage or you can't afford the coverage that you were raped into. I am of category one. Well, listen to this. It will cost the federal government, that is taxpayers, $50,000 for every person who gets health care under the Obamacare law, the Congressional Budget Office revealed on Monday. Now, this is coming by finding people like me who can't afford insurance anymore because Obamacare has ruined it and the price of people who are forced to pay into it. 50 grand, that's the Affordable Care Act, mind you. $50,000 is considered affordable here at uh, 420 AM. The best case scenario described by CBO would result in between 24 million and 27 million 
fewer Americans being uninsured in 2025 compared to the year before the Affordable Care Act took effect. Pulling that off will cost Uncle Sam $1.35 trillion or $50,000 per head. You would have to be really celebrating 420 right now in order for this to sound like a good idea. It says the numbers are daunting. No, that would be an understatement. It'll take 1.993 trillion, a number that is 1,993303030, to provide insurance subsidies to poor and middle class Americans. Now, do you mean to tell me that that's the cheapest we could come up with? That that's the very best? If so, what in the hell would be the very worst? Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Got three more stories left to get to. I just want to remind you that Mike McLaughlin, he's a writer and he's a sponsor of the show. And I am so happy to have a writer as the sponsor of the show. Let me ask you something. Even really popular writers like Stephen King, Dean Koontz, we don't have enough readers in America that you ever hear about them unless they had a movie made. You can't tell me what Dean Koontz's last book was. You have no idea. Because people don't read anymore. <clears throat> well, if you're listening to me talk, you're probably one of the people that do read and you lament this in much the same way that I do. I got a great writer for you. His name is Mike McLaughlin. And I'm asking you to please look him up on Facebook.com and let him know you heard about it from The Correct Views. Guys, three more stories to get to. This one, uh, I was kind of shocked, kind of not shocked. Uh, it's brought to you by Change Your Ta Transportation. Uh, look them up. You can find them on Facebook, too. If you're within a 50-mile radius of Canton, Ohio, they will price match. Change Transportation. Where you want to go, they will take you. State legislatures considering more than 200 bills to block federal power. This is the 10th Amendment Center. And this is wonderful news. Less than one month into 2015, as this was written February 2nd, state legislative season in the 10th Amendment Center counts more than 200 bills seeking to block or limit federal power. Why would we want to limit federal power? Listen to the last segment. Because the last time we gave the feds responsibility for anything, it cost us $50,000 to insure somebody. Sponsored by both Democrats and Republicans, these bills range from narrowly focused legislation that would allow terminally ill people access to experimental drugs, which should happen if they're willing to take the risks and medical treatments despite FDA regulations to bills that would deny resources and assistance to states to the NSA, which should happen. Other legislation addresses the Second Amendment, that's the right to bear arms for you Usher fans, the federal prohibition of hemp and marijuana, Common Core, which is a disaster, the use of, the use of drones for surveillance, the Affordable Care Act, we've covered that, and even the federal grant programs that arm local police with battlefield ready military equipment. Tenth Amendment Center, it says, founder and executive Michael Bolden said the sheer number of bills indicates just how mainstream state action to block federal power has become. Quote, this is unprecedented, he said, from mass spying to gun control property rights, militarized police, the drug war, and everything in between, we've never seen so much activity on the state level. Thank God, friends, don't you know we are named the United States of America for a reason? Some say that all of this state action merely represents a right-wing movement and backlash against President Obama but Bolden bristles at the notion. The great misconception is that this is a right-wing movement that is trying to oppose federal power and with some issues like the Second Amendment and the ACA, that's Obamacare, that is certainly true, he said. 
But, he goes on, we're tracking more than 200 bills, and many of the most successful, like marijuana, hemp farming, right to try bills, which would be the drugs issue, and stopping NSA spying, lean strongly left, which would be Democrat, or totally bipartisan, which would be independent. Anyone claiming that this is a partisan fad is either not paying attention or lying. In other words, the states have had enough of the government with their hands in where it doesn't belong. Um, two more stories as we uh, get ready to close out here. This is good. Former NSA... Oh, no, never mind, that page just zipped out on me. So we're going to go to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. Conrad Hilton, Paris's brother, surrenders to FBI charged in jet fracas. Now what's funny about this is when Paris Hilton was be, uh, first becoming popular, and I mean this was a while ago, when she was first really starting to gain some traction, I had thought she was pretty. So I went out of my way to not watch her show or anything about her because I just knew that she would be this kind of person. And as I got to know her more and more, I liked her less and less. Well, friends, her brother is even worse. I'm happy I never thought he was hot. That's a joke. Um, LATimes.com, as my page wants to freeze up here, this idiot got on a plane and started harassing everybody within sight, calling them basically peons and bragging and gloating about the, the wealth and prestige of his family over the commoners. You couldn't make this up if you tried. Literally, if you wrote down this man's comments in a story, Everybody would tell you to change the story because they wouldn't believe that somebody would actually make comments this snooty. But he really did. He gets on a plane and proceeds to tell everybody within earshot that he's a Hilton and that his father has bailed him out to the tunes of hundreds of thousands of dollars before and he will do so now, you know, he doesn't mind doing so. It's just this drivel that would literally be taken as, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Overacting, if you were to see it in an actual uh, movie environment. <sighs> Let me scroll down here. I hate this site. LA Times has the worst site ever. Conrad Hilton, younger brother of socialite Paris Hilton, surrendered Tuesday morning to the FBI after being charged with assaulting and intimidating several flight attendants aboard a British Airways flight to London to Los Angeles last year. Conrad Hughes Hilton was charged with assaulting the flight crew to the point where it interfered with the ability to perform their duties according to a U.S. District Court federal criminal complaint. And then uh, it says the document contains objectionable language. Yeah, that would be the language that Hilton used. He was scheduled to appear in court Tuesday afternoon and convicted of the charge he faces 20 years in federal prison. Prosecutors said Hilton was a passenger on Flight 269 on July 31st from London to L.A. and immediately began disrupting service. At one point, he called the flight crew and passengers peasants, according to the complaint. Passengers appeared frightened and children were crying as Hilton carried on his tirade. And this is why I didn't even want to know these people. According to the criminal complaint, drink service was delayed 40 minutes because of Hilton being disruptive. He allegedly, allegedly left his seat and was pacing down the aisles, blocking flight attendants at one point. He began yelling profanities and speaking loudly. He was disruptive and argumentative. The crew believed that he was under the influence of drugs because he was behaving in an erratic way. If you want to square up with me, bro, then bring it on and I'll expletive fight you, according to a complaint, is something he said. 
He threatened the flight crew members, saying he would own anyone in the flight. He threw a fist toward a flight attendant. It doesn't say if she was male or female, or well, if the person. He reportedly grabbed a flight attendant's shirt and said, I could get you all fired in five minutes. I know your boss. My father will pay this out. Had he done this before, dad paid $300,000. It's just elbowed him in the chin. The friends, that is by far and away 